Bob Ross and Kevin Hill are two legends of the art world and I'm going to use their techniques I've learned from their videos on YouTube to create the same painting but in two different styles on the same canvas. This is an 18 by 24 inch double prime pre-stretched canvas and I've masked off a little bit of an area to the left which will be Bob's side and to the right which will be Kevin's side. On the Bob's side I've coated the whole canvas in a thin layer of liquid white. On the right hand side, which is Kevin's side, you can see I'm just sketching in some detail where I want the mountain range to be in some trees. The canvas is completely dry. On the Bob's side, I've coated the sky in a thin but nice coating of phthalo blue and down at the base, a little bit of a lizard crimson. Now I'm just gonna pull in some water on the Bob's side just using the same dirty brush. On the Kevin side of the painting, I've just hit the sky with a little bit of clear gel and white. And I'm just hitting just above the mountain range with a little bit of a peachy color made from a lizard crimson, white and yellow ochre. Now folks, I'm no professional artist, I'm just an enthusiastic amateur. In fact, I've never even had an art lesson. I've just watched lots of YouTube videos, which means that if I can do it, you can do it as well. Now, I'm not copying any particular painting. This is just a standard mountain with two trees either side, a little bit of a sky, some, some trees in the midground, and a little bit of a lake down there. I'm just using the techniques I've picked up by watching Bob Ross and Kevin Hill YouTube videos, and they're so inspirational to me. I've learned so much from watching them. Bob and Kevin are not the only artists on YouTube. There's so many great, great YouTube channels out there teaching art. And if you want me to try and emulate or copy or use the techniques of a certain artist and do this kind of project again, please leave a little bit of a comment down in the comments section. And if you are enjoying this video, please like the video, subscribe if you've not done so already, and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any more Master Temple paintings. Now back to the artwork, you can see on the Bob side I've just taken a little bit of dark colour, this is mixed up from a lizard crimson, Prussian blue, a little bit of brown and a little bit of black and I'm just putting in a basic mountain shape using the palette knife. Over on the Kev side we're just sketching in some grey area where the, uh, the, the, the rocks will be, I'm using a little bit of a grey colour made from a little bit of burnt umber blue and a tiny touch of red and white obviously as well. Now I'm using a little bit of colour in the mountain before I put any snow on because that will give us some nice little detailed rocks. Back to the bob side and I seem to have missed out a happy little cloud so take a fan brush and a little bit of white paint just let's float a nice little cloud just in there like so. All I'm doing is just tapping in a little cloud and I might put another one in just there like that just to give it some balance in the painting. Still continuing with the rock work on the mountains in the, in the Kevin's side, just using a little detailed brush, little, I think this is a little filbert brush. I'm using Windsor & Newton's paints and I'm using Windsor & Newton's brushes as well. I've got a few Bob Ross ones mixed in there as well, so don't worry about that. On the left hand side I'm just fluffing up those happy little clouds, but on the right hand side I'm still continuing to put in some of that rock work. Now I'm just hitting the, uh, the Kevin's side with a little bit of blue, I'm going to sneak the snow in and around that rock work just using a little bit of pale blue colour. Now I'm going to use various shades of pale blue to give different indications of shadows uh, as we go along in the picture. Let's pull out some of that black or dark paint that we painted on the Bob's side with a one inch brush. Now I'm using a one inch brush here because of half the canvas size really by masking off two different sides to the canvas. So I just used that one inch brush just to pull it out, removing excess paint and misting the bottom as we go along. As you can see on the Kevin side, I'm still sneaking in some of that blue paint in and around the rocks. Now if it mixes with a little bit with that rock work, that's alright because it'll act as little rocky kind of shadows in the snow. On the Bob's side, I've taken a little roll of white paint, titanium white paint, I pulled it out nice and flat on the palette as Bob would do. Cut off a little roll and I'm just letting the paint break nice and floaty down the side of the mountain, picking out some of those highlights. Letting the paint break so we get all that nice little detail. Now back to the Kevin side, I'm using a little bit of off-white colour, it's just slightly greyed off. I don't want brilliant white highlights just yet, I, I can reserve that for later, but just use a little bit of greyed off white. And I'm going to sneak in some of that snow in and around the rock work. Just keep doing this, just keep building up a little bit of layer after layer after layer, even on. The, uh, the Bob Ross mountains, just keep building up, be very gentle, be very floaty, be very light and loose. On the Kevin side, 
I've just taken a liner brush and a little bit of that grey colour and I'm picking out some more individual stones wherever I think a little bit of more shadow work or stonework needs to be. Just spend some time and pick out those stones. I'm just going to continue doing the Bob Ross mountain with a little bit of white on the palette knife, nice and loose, just build up some of those highlights. How easy is this? It's, it, it's, it's unbelievable. Remember, I've never had a heart lesson. I've just watched some videos, got some equipment, had a bit of practice, and away we go. A little bit of blue now on the Bob Ross Mountain, a little bit of pale blue, using the same techniques, the same methods, just nice and light and gentle, and just floating some nice little happy little shadows in there. There we go. Now, down on the Kevin side, I've got a fan brush and all I'm doing is putting a little bit of foothill work down there, a little bit of tree work. So this is a really pale bluey, greeny colour. And I'm just giving the indication of some trees that are far, far away, deep in the mist, deep in the snow. Just a little bit of tree work, I suppose. Is that what we call it? Tree work. And then all I'm going to do is just lift up very, very gently, little small strokes, probably about three or four mil or or an eighth of an inch or something like that. Now, it may look as if I'm rushing ahead and completing the uh, the Kevin side before the Bob side, but it has taken me about half an hour to get to where we are now. So I've, I've edited the video out a little bit there. The Bob Ross version of it is virtually done in real time, which means you can you can get it done in, in a short space of time, really, which is, which is epic, which is one of the brucey bonuses of using the Bob Ross technique. However, the Kevin Hill inspired picture seems to have a little bit more control over the detail, though it is timely. So again, Brucey bonuses to both versions, but uh, some limitations as well, which is great. We're always learning when we're doing new things like this. Mid-ground time for the uh, Kevin side of the picture, and all I'm doing is taking a little liner brush, and I'd use a little bit of a bigger brush if it was a bigger painting, obviously, but I'm using a little liner one today. I've not thinned out any of the paint. All I'm doing is Little little dots of trees way back in the distance. Don't worry, the bob side will catch up before the end of the composition. All I'm using is a little liner brush and some darker green, not completely dark green, but darker green than the, the foothills in the background. And I'm just like basically drawing in with the paint some little evergreen trees. The Bob Mountain Range, I just keep tweaking a little bit of paint here and there where I think the shadow should be where the highlight should be just putting it in but just bear in mind do not overplay this if you if you plow on lots and lots and lots of paint you're going to end up with a lot of thick texture and that mountain will soon jump out at you and it'll be almost in the foreground I think I need a little bit of a snow cap just up there I seem to have missed a little bit there which is okay we can put that back in but a little bit of a, a little bit of a tip I've found do not have a cartoon character style mountain, which means it has a black outline. Make sure you get some of that color, that, that blue, that white into that uh, into the skyline, really. Now, as you can see over on the Kevin side, I've blended out the base of some of these trees. All I'm doing is blending out a few of the bases, then sketching in with the, the little liner brush, just some more trees. Then I'll blend them out draw some more in, I'll paint some more in, just like that. Keep doing that till we get a nice little herd of trees or a forest of trees or whatever we call them. Grove, I think it's called a grove of trees. There we go. And one or two of those trees on that uh, on that grove, I will pull out some arms and limbs just to give a little indication way, way, way back in the distance that there is something going on. I've taken a little bit of white paint now on the Kevin side, a little bit of white paint on a soft blender brush and I'm just teasing the base those little trees. Now it seems I've been working on this Bob Ross mountain forever, but it really has only been about eight minutes or so into the composition. We've got a nice mountain painted in real time. Anyway, let's get the big brush and let's blend out the base of this big old mountain. So just tap, follow with the lines of the mountain, follow the, the angles. So tap one way and then we'll tap the other way when we go to paint the, uh, the shadow side of the mountain mist up the base it will mix with that liquid white that's on there and become all fuzzy all misty and i remember i think it was bob that once said this in fact if you can see a mountain in its entirety you can always see the top but you can never see the bottom because it's diffused with mist and, uh, and, and fog and even smog nowadays anyway just bring all that together with a nice big brush 
just tweaking a few trees on the tree line in the mid ground on the uh, the Kevin side of the composition just just pulling out a few extra hidden details it gives it a little bit of something else not to say it's better than the Bob side just to say it's a little bit different using different techniques so the little trees have been pulled out of the mist and popping forward you've got to really look for these but they're there okay this project may also work with past masters such as Moe or uh, Van Gogh, you know, side by side on the same canvas, doing a similar topic, just using different techniques. So if you'd like me to do something like that, just let me know down in the comments. Okay, a little bit more misting with a big brush, pulling out some of those little snow peaks, you know, where, where you could go skiing down, just teasing them together like that. Meanwhile, on the Kevin side, we're just adding a few more different coloured trees. There we go. Just nice and easy, nice and gentle. Nice wet on wet painting. Now, on the Bob side, we come to the fan brush with a little bit of pale green on, just like we did on the Kevin side. And we're just flicking up some little trees. This pale green colour. So it's a pale bluey green. It needs to have a bit of blue in it for it to be far away. Okay, don't have any warm colours in that just yet. So just put a little few little footles, blend them in and start again. Put a couple more in front of it. Now I'm using the same colour on the bob side, just a little bit thicker paint or a little bit more paint. So that changes the, the tone and the value of, of that. The right hand side of the composition, I've just used a little bit of that clear gel and white. I've put a touch of blue in there as well, just the sky colour blue that we mixed up earlier. I'm using the fan brush for this and I'm just using side to side motions and I might get like little streaks of blue paint and white paint that will give little indications of uh, the ripples on the water. Okay, just like that. We will pull some reflections down. In fact, we'll do that right now. So again, this is, I pulled a sneaky there. This is a clean fan brush with a little bit of that color on there, that tree color. I'm just pulling it straight down into the water like so. Now, if these trees were closer to us, we could paint individual trees upside down. But uh, since they're that far away, we'll just use the fan brush and pull them straight down like we would do normally. On the bob side of the composition, I'm just using the same fan brush or same size fan brush and I'm just using it sideways on or straight on and we're creating lots and lots of evergreens way back in the distance. There we go, so just tap straight down. Forgive the hand, you can't really see what I'm doing, but, but you know what I'm doing, don't you folks? You know what I'm doing, just tap straight down. Now I'm varying the colour as I go along on, on both sides of the composition really because it needs a little bit of variance. There's not, you know, we're not looking at the same kind of tree or the same colour of tree. Even though this, they're only slight, they are there. So some are a little bit darker, some are a little bit lighter. There we go. Reflections just gently go straight across with the one inch brush that's clean and dry and I'm just taking off any sharpness, putting it down into the water like so. Now on the Kev side of the picture, the Kev side of the composition, we can start putting in where our big trees are. And while I'm doing that, on the Bob side, I'm using the big brush to pull some of those reflections down, straight down, and then gently, gently across, just like so. Just, just get those reflections down into the water. A little bit of liquid white on the edge of the palette knife now. Just pull it out flat and scrape straight across the palette. Uh, give it a little bit of a bead right on the edge of the knife and we can cut in a little bit of a waterline just like so that will separate the two darker colours and you can even put some ripples out here into the lake. Now back to the trees on the Kevin side of the painting and what I'm doing is taking a deep green colour I've made sap green with a little bit of burnt umber and a few other colours just thrown in there anything we get off the palette and all I'm doing is using this, this small rounded brush and I'm just pulling out some of the limbs, some of the arms of that tree like that. Just pull them straight out. Now come back in with a liner brush and tweak some more colours and some more limbs just out of that tree. Now onto the bob side, I've used another dark green colour. This is a bit darker this time. Okay, and I'm just using the fan brush sideways on. And all I'm doing is just zigzagging side to side across the centre line. Just some of the foliage, some of the arms, some of the legs and the legs, some of the limbs. Well, I suppose it will have legs when we put a trunk on there, yeah. Okay, I think someone once said you don't have to be crazy to be an artist, but it does help. It does help. Okay, right down in the foreground, a little bit of that dark colour. This is, it looks black, but it's not. It's just a really dark, bluey, greeny colour. Okay, but plenty of paint has gone on there. There we go. 
Right, so over onto the Kevin side of the painting and all we're doing again with the other tree, trying to make these pictures look almost similar. Same subject, just different painting methods, different wet and wet painting techniques I used. Okay, we're just pulling out some of that colour from the centre line of the tree. Just pull it out, a little rounded brush gives you all sorts of little crazy organic arms on this uh, on this big old evergreen tree. Now, on the bob side, I've taken a little bit of a lighter green. Now, I'm going to use a couple of different highlights for this. I find that this works a little bit better than just using one single highlight and one single shadow. So, a little bit of highlight colour, and because our mountain dictates that the light is coming from the right-hand side, We'll put the highlights on the right hand side of the trees as well. So, fan brush, little light colour, little light greener colour, and we'll pick out the uh, the highlights of the arms. Now, on the Kevin side, we're using a little bit of a workshop towel or shop towel, lint free tissue anyway, and we'll just put that onto the paint, onto the trees, leave that for about five, ten minutes, and it will absorb all the excess oil off there. Look at that. And it'll leave it a nice, firmer, drier paint so we can really plow on some nice highlights. So again, same kind of technique as we used to put on the base colour. But all we're doing is putting a little bit of a lighter colour. So for the highlight side on the bob trees, we're going to have to thin down the paint. Now this is good, but it has a little bit of risk involved. If you use too much thinner or too much uh, oil, you end up making the paint drip off the picture. And if you work the picture too much you can end up mixing mud and you'll be cross with everybody trust me i know that on the kevin side because we've used the tissues and we've we've absorbed the, some of that oil we can just put in straight color you know straight off the palette we don't have to thin it down i guess both techniques work but it's up to you how you do it you know we're all individual and art is an individual kind of hobby isn't it so on the kevin trees all i'm going to do is take a little bit of color a little bit of paler greeny colour, pick out some of the highlights like we're doing, just pick them out right on the edge of the leaves and the limbs and work them back into the tree. Once we've got a nice coat in or where we want the highlights to be on that, that, uh, that arm, that branch or that limb, we can come back with a, a stronger lighter colour and put them right on the very, very tips, you know, give a little bit of glow to the tree. One thing I find tricky with the bob style of painting these evergreen trees is, is the limbs that come out towards us from the from the centre of the tree. It's a little bit difficult, not impossible, but a little bit difficult to achieve, especially with a thinned out paint. That's why the Kevin kind of tree is a little bit easier to, to recreate some, some limbs that give the tree a little bit of a 3D effect. Let's carry on picking out all those little highlights on these trees, just using a little bit of thinned out, yellowy greeny colour just on the liner brush this is on the Kevin side of the tree if you didn't know just pull them out just very gently just place them where the sun is really shining there we go I'm using a palette knife just on the bob kind of tree just to, to put a centre in the tree and just scrape in some little sticks and twigs just down there straight through the paint into the canvas like so I'm just adding a few little ochre and red and crimson bushes down in both compositions just to just to bring the foreground towards us. Kevin always says red is a foreground colour, so let's pop that foreground towards us. Now then, with some grasses just added, with a little bit of effect off the liner brush, it's the moment of truth time. Let's whip off this old masking tape and reveal the finished composition. I really enjoyed this one. I think this has been an absolutely amazing project. I wanted something simple but iconic to paint. And I think a mountain with a lake and a couple of trees has been really worthwhile. If you want to see me paint something similar to this, but in a, in a different styles, different techniques, please let me know down in the comments. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. It really does help us out, you know, and hit the like button. I really love to hear your views and your comments and which is your preferred method. So until next time, take care of yourself. Stay safe. Thanks for watching. Happy days.